what's up guys welcome back to day four and if you guys didn't catch the last one on day three i actually screwed up my lens and this is a brand new one so the video should look that much better today but we also have a little bit of an update on the work and we have a few more supplies that we picked up because this thing is uh <laughs> it's always eating up supplies and always eating up something so uh we had to go replenish but I think that we have pretty much everything to finish at least the floors and the torque boxes. So I went and picked up the seam sealer. This is the brushable seam sealer. I also got some resin for our fiberglass. And this is like a fiberglass cloth. You can see it kind of resembles almost like a uh, fiber, uh, carbon fiber because it's the same kind of idea. It's a cloth and then a resin. These are gonna be for laying our seam sealer. So I got a couple of brushes. I got one angled brush, and I also got one just straight brush. And to be honest, I thought I was getting them both the same size, but it looks like I overlooked that, but that's okay. We'll make it work. And to give you guys a quick update, this side is pretty much finished. So we have all of the body mounts in, all of the gussets in, everything is good there. And if we run over to the passenger side, Todd managed to cut away most of the torque box. So you can see that is pretty much removed. We got the floor out last time, and now we just have to cut away. Well, that's already disassembled or removed. Now we just need to disassemble the front, get rid of that, get rid of this, and get the new one in. And these are also gonna go those wires were for these lights back here, but you can see these lights didn't last me very long before they started to rust and corrode and yeah, no good. So those lights are gonna go because this whole bumper is gonna go because we have a new cross member, we have new corners, we have a new sill, which includes the body mounts underneath, but we're gonna have to get rid of this bumper because I want a bumper that has recovery points. So instead of these lights, I'm gonna have recovery points and it's gonna have a two inch receiver. So we're gonna decide if we're gonna end up using these lights on anything at all, but most likely they're gonna get junked. But that's all right. We've got more lights and more things to replace those with. The important part is getting all of this structurally sound and getting this thing back on the trails. So we're getting very close. Just a few more days, I think, but right now, let's tackle it and let's see how far we can get today. I'm hopeful that we can finish off this side and we can move on to the back. So back here, I've already started taking it apart. I got the lights off. You can see this one was starting to actually rust behind there. You can actually see all of the bulging and cracking. This side, well, yeah, that side speaks for itself. Somehow the hole survived a little bit better than this side, but regardless, we still have the tailgate to remove. And I did check underneath all the carpets. So this side is pretty good. It's a little bit of rust right there that we'll address. Underneath is actually looking really good. So somebody looks like they welded something there. But other than that, it's just dirty. And underneath, like, it's pretty good. So I think we'll be okay on that front. So I'm not too worried about the floors. They're pretty much the same all the way through. This side isn't terrible either there is a bit of rust up here that we're going to address but once we remove this corner we'll be able to get in there better maybe throw some fiberglass down or something and yeah next thing that i have to do is take this tailgate off 
and we'll be able to actually get at it and see what we can do to get these corners taken apart. A subscriber actually told me that I should be using an air hammer right in there, that that isn't seam sealer, that they're spot welded on the inside. We will be using an air hammer, but first we're going to cut it here just a little bit away from the seam so that we can get to it and see what we're dealing with and we don't cut away too much of it and we don't lose that lip on this side. So we're gonna take it slow and attack this one piece by piece. Then over here, same idea. And the good thing is, I think that the top hinge, you can see how it's supported. There's like three layers of metal there. There's the original piece, then another piece and another piece added. So now, I've never had that actually work. <laughs> like that is, that is like a brand new Jeep or she will be. <laughs> but the one thing that we're looking at here is when I lift up on the tailgate, you can see that hinge, well, the whole corner, but that hinge, the pin is gone. The top isn't great either it still moves so i might be looking into getting myself some new hinges if new hinges are too expensive then what we might end up doing is flipping the hinges down to the bottom and using this as like a drop down tailgate only problem with that is i have to relocate my tire carrier which i don't really want to do but having such a heavy tire up here will cause this to sag and droop eventually especially going off road and hitting rough terrain so I think the best plan would be to get a bumper mount tire carrier, which we will be replacing the entire bumper like I mentioned. But I think for now, I'm going to look at how much hinges will be just to get it back in its original position. If they're too expensive, then we're obviously just going to do something to kind of get around that. But uh, that's the plan is to get it back to this configuration. There it goes. <laughs> I saw it pop out. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Very there. Well, there goes the head. Perfect. Yes. All right. <laughs> Look at that. I got that drilled out. Camera died, but I got the last one drilled out. And the hinges are nice and loose and ready to come out. I also got a couple of sparks already on the lens. So the new lens lasted me about two hours. <laughs> it's a good thing I bought a pair of them. So tailgate is released from its prison. I do not need to disconnect any wires though, because once I remove this, I'll show you guys. Uh, <laughs> once we pop that clutch, there she goes. Okay. So you got it? Yeah. And this is why you do not need to take off any wires. So there's a positive and a negative right here. And those connect to this guy right here, which runs to the wires for the third brake light. And that's a kind of nifty way to do it. I kind of like it because I don't have any wires running there. So easy on and off. However, if we were to do the fold up tailgate, this is gonna have to get reworked somehow because the way it swings, it comes around this lip. So you can see there's like a bit of a lip there. Uh, it's not gonna be able to come around the lip if it's going straight up. And the way that this is, you can see, well, you know what? It, it does sit perfectly flat, so you know what? Hmm. I'll have to play around with it, but I'm thinking that's gonna be the one thing I gotta watch out for. However, everything else back here is off. I'm gonna have to remove the rest of these bolts, which I'll take care of in a minute. And then we can start attacking these. In the front here, all we have left is this torque box, which is attached right up there, just on this seam right here. So this is my new torque box. And this is the one piece right here, this one little seam where it's still attached. So we've pulled out the sawzall, we've got the grinder going, and it just does not want to let go. But we'll get her out in just a moment. You can see that's the inner portion that you guys can see from the inside, the kick panel. Here's the rest. And I'll show you the piece that we took out because it was brutal. It's laying just over here. 
So this is the side from the passenger, or this is the passenger side, I should say. And yeah, that body mount was definitely sunken in. That body mount we've repaired already once. And she doesn't look that bad, but it doesn't look great at all either. And there's the nuts, or the studs and the nuts. And yeah, they have seen better days. You can see how crispy crunchy it is in here. So I'm be I'm very glad to be getting this out of there and to be getting the fresh stuff in. And once we get all the fresh stuff in, we're gonna be coating the entire floor and we'll be coating the entire uh, underside. The underside I'm gonna do in this stuff. You can see this stuff is pretty thick, like down here where I have multiple layers of beautiful paint and thinner, uh, not thinner, liner and all kinds of stuff. I think there's filler in there too. You can see some green, but yeah, this stuff actually holds up really, really well. Out of everything on the Jeep, this coating is the toughest stuff that we've dealt with so far when it comes to grinding, sanding, anything like that. So I even tested it out here. You can see got a nice big old screwdriver. And if you go like, like you really gotta, like you re really gotta try to get under there. And you can see I got under the paint in one spot. So this stuff I'm happy with, and I'm definitely gonna be using this again. Cause you can see that stuff is pretty damn tough. Like you really gotta hit it. And then that's not even paint. That's just like the primer. You can still keep going through that. So I'm happy. I'm very happy with this. This is what I have on the bumpers, the frame, the sides over there, right here. So that's what this is. That's what's covering the entire frame, my wheel wells. So I'm not too worried about that. That stuff's been holding up amazing. And I'm not gonna have an issue with using that again underneath and on all the, the torque boxes and stuff like that. Let me put my pointing stick down. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the rest, even the outside here, this is all gonna get coated with like a Rhino liner or a Raptor liner. So it's gonna be kind of like a bed liner texture. So that is gonna seal everything from the outside. This stuff is already sealing everything from the inside. So I think we should be good. Okay, I got the back cleaned up. You can see the corners here are gonna need a little bit of a patch as well as this one. And now the next step is to remove this and get this guy out of our way. Hopefully we can remove this first and then I can better kind of see what to do with the corner. But I've already started to drill out the spot welds. This one, you can see it was already rotted behind it, but got that one. This one, I drilled a little bit too far, but that's okay, because we can always fix that up. The new part doesn't actually have, uh, I think I put it back in the box, but the new part doesn't actually have the holes in it for the spot welds. So we'll make our own mounts and spot welds and whatever. So I'm not too worried if I go through this plate when I'm drilling. But I think that's going to be the easiest way is to just drill out each one of these spot welds and pull it out. I know I could get a spot weld bit and that would make life easier, but we don't have it right now. So we got to make do with what we have. And someone definitely did weld something underneath there because you can see this side and this side. I don't know what that would have been. Maybe, oh, that probably that body mount over there. So there's a body mount right in there. Might have been that. Either way. We'll fix these corners up with some fiberglass or some metal, probably some fiberglass to be honest, because it'll be easier and yeah, I'll just do the job. But you can see the seam sealer here kind of gave up and that's why it started rusting. This side, same story. You can see the seam sealer is there and then here it kind of gave up and it started rusting. But that's all right, we'll get her done. I feel nauseous, believe me Never had a lot of shit come easy Had to work hard, struggle just to be me Had to rise up just so they could see me Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Taking 
to your hands a plan your own hands can land your own brand and damn i feel like no one takes accountability they want the credibility convincingly unwilling to put in the fucking hours it takes to get some power don't be fucking sour take a cold shower scream until you're louder work until you're prouder and fuck all the doubters they're just yeah. fucking downers i swear to god they all let me down i always fought just to wear the crown I'm pissed off at these fucking clowns Who were all taught they deserve an ounce It's only worth it if you work for it It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown So quick update. I started off by drilling them through and then I saw that they were just separating. So at this point, I just started to separate them with the air hammer. We got them out. Now we have it cut on this side and on this side so that hopefully we can take this and just peel it back. But if I can't peel it back, then what I'm going to have to do is on this side here, we're going to go underneath, just give it a quick zip like this all the way underneath with this guy and then I'll be able to go in there with the air hammer and release that last little lip there and yeah we open this up just to kind of see what's going on over here this is pretty much out it's just gonna have to be kind of finagled out of there but yeah that's pretty much what we're dealing with here we almost have the sill out and once we get the sill out then it's just gonna be a little bit left Definitely got my use out of that cutting disc. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not wasting anything around here. Not even these gloves, which I should have changed probably a week ago. Oh, yeah. Finally got it to pop in this corner. It was uh, sealed. See right there. Yeah, so see guys, this is why you don't want to take the air hammer to that section over there. Because it leaves it like this. So that's why we're going to be a little bit more gentle when we get to the corner there. This, however, will be able to cover up and will be able to reshape pretty easily. So that's why we were rough over here. And you can see there's quite a bit of rust hiding on the inside there too. But that's all right. Now I'm just going to give it a quick cut like this and then we'll air hammer the last seam off and yeah. So this is how far we've gotten right now. We managed to get that sill out of here. 
the sill is pretty much the best piece of metal that we've taken off so far but it was pretty rotted under here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this all up see if this metal is salvageable if it's salvageable then obviously we'll salvage it if not then we'll deal with that at that point i did cut it here and here so that instead of removing this entire lip back here or actually where would it be it would be right here so uh what we're gonna do is take this piece because this is the lip here that we need to take off just this piece i think what we're gonna do is flatten this up for more strength because this piece is already rotting and this piece is on the inside of the tub so like we're gonna do our best to clean it up and get it as rust free as possible and then we're just gonna fold this metal into itself so that we can actually have double the strength and then we'll attach our new piece to this that way when we weld it it doesn't just burn right through everything so this will have to get straightened back out you can see she's a little wavy but that's not too bad we're just going to use the uh, body hammer put a piece of two by four in there get her all straight so that should be pretty easy now all i have to do is clean all that up and straighten this so not too bad we're making pretty good progress i'd say Okay, we got quite a bit done from the last update and these actually came out like butter so we've got both of these guys removed and loose or loosened so that i can remove them when i need to i left the bolts in there just so that we don't have an issue finding them but we're probably gonna have to get ourselves two new hinges because both of these pins are worn out and they're kind of walking around however back here I managed to grind everything down as you can see very shiny so now this lip we drilled a couple holes in so that we can plug weld it or so that todd can plug weld it we're gonna fold this up into this to double it up and give us the extra rigidity and extra strength then before we weld on the new piece i'm gonna cover this all with the gravel guard which is the same stuff that this is to make sure that nothing is exposed and we don't have any bare metal so first we're gonna do that then, or actually no, first, I'm gonna grab the body hammer here and I'm gonna shape this back as best as I can and see what we can do. I've already tried to bend it back a bit. You can see it's not as wavy as it was. I did also have to open it up to get in there. But now, I'm gonna fold this back as best as I can and then we're gonna cut open the corners. We got the floor pan fitted and she does fit now we're just cleaning up the edges all the way around oh sorry about that now we're just cleaning up the edges all the way around over here i still need to do this side and this side that i need to do a little bit higher up but we're almost done we're almost ready to fit the floor pan in and we have a couple of gussets ready to go as well so these are going to go sit something like this and strengthen up our body mounts so we've got gussets ready we've got the floor prepped for the pan to go in then we're gonna be ready to throw in the torque box back here now if you guys watched at least one minute of any of these rebuild videos then you'll know i'm not a body man and i do not do body work but i am hella proud at this edge like yeah she's not perfect she's still wavy but the jeep was never perfect to begin with and to be honest if you guys remember what it looked like about two minutes ago this is amazing like i am i am ecstatic with my work here i'm not a body man i don't do body work but this i'm proud of so now we have our edge back and my plan is that once we get the sill in here 
anything here that you see is a little lumpy and bumpy and not perfect, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, either body filler or fiberglass filler after and sand it all down to get a nice smooth transition from the sill to the floor. And then once we coat everything, you'll never know. It's gonna look perfect and pristine. So I think that the next step will be like we just saw Todd cutting these open. We're gonna cut open the corners to see what we're dealing with behind there. And that might be the it for today because it's been a long day, but we've got a lot done. actually solid yeah that's actually attached to something nice those are actually attached to a plate that's actually attached to something in here ah okay so the hinges are reinforced these ones i showed you guys earlier how they're reinforced with this extra plating here and apparently these ones are also reinforced with a plate under here because it's something still holding it in that spot you can see we have it open all the way around there's nothing on the bottom and she is Oh, there she goes. Oh, there's one. All right, I might need two hands for this one. Oh, well, you see, there's a souvenir from one of our trips. Um, that's a solid brick, which, yeah. Uh, <laughs> interesting. I wonder what's behind that side. I don't see your blade yet. No, I don't I don't I don't see it. The lip is going to be right about here. So just just you're just getting to it, but there's also a double double piece of metal there. So try not to cut through both if you can. Yep, I see you. So you're just above it now. The, it's gonna be like basically right after where you've penetrated through. So, uh, so like uh, right in here. Okay, so that's a good spot to leave it then. Because I can see you're about one centimeter from that lip. Okay, good. Uh. Yeah, okay. almost. Right. So you, you can see there. Yeah, now I can come across the top once I get uh, a little more blade. <laughs> that was a little short. And we got her off. And we've got some souvenirs. God damn. It looks like we really brought some with us home, eh? Jeez, I don't even want to pull that out. But what the heck? Um, oh, okay, so that is for this. So there's our two wires for that. There's our lights. Our body mount has seen better days. But she'll be easy to remove. The hardest part was that sill. The corners aren't too, too bad. And once we cut the corner out, you can see that is the two bolts that were there. This was on the inside like this, and you can see they were painted shut so they were hard to get out. But this is basically like a reinforcement plate to add strength to this cap because behind here, you have only one more plate of metal and that is the inner tub. So you can see right around here, that's the inner tub and that's the outer tub. So the outer is what we're replacing. The inner is staying. So you got to be careful not to cut through both when you're cutting over here. And yeah, that's the corner. So this corner will be cut out all the way down to here. But we first wanted to make sure that we can get to this lip. And we didn't want to remove this lip from this piece because they both have a lip. This panel as well as the corner. And they kind of butt together. So you see they have been CMC. I mean, uh spot welded in a few different places, but 
I don't know if we're gonna be doing that just because you can tell how hard it is to get in there. What we might be doing is either riveting or bolting these together and then having them sit like that because these aren't structural. This is structural just to hold everything together. Oh, sorry, the light died. That, this is structural to hold the door and the actual tire and everything, but these corners are not. So we don't have to have this crazy sealed. We just have to have it connected and looking pretty decent. And since my light is dying, I think I'm gonna wrap her up. Well guys, make sure you go on Todd's channel, drop him a big like, subscribe to his channel, cause he's putting in all the work and he's making this whole project happen. So big shout out to Todd, big thanks to him, because yeah, without him, this thing would be laying in a scrap pile right now. <laughs> but it's been a long day. We've put in a lot of work. Uh, I've sacrificed another camera lens. I don't know if you guys can see the dot on the lens, but there is a dot just over there and it's, uh, it's not looking great. So I melted the lens again with the sparks. I dropped my camera and broke my camera light. So my light is all screwed up. I'm gonna have to replace that because it doesn't wanna sit on top of the camera anymore. But I think we're done for the day. And it's been a good day. We got a lot done, a lot more than I thought. The project is coming along a lot quicker than I thought. And I think we should be back out on the trails in a few weeks. So I'm eager to get back out there. I know you guys are eager to get back out there and we should be out on the trails very, very soon. But I think that's gonna cut it for today's video. I think that's gonna be it. We do have a little bit more work to do and we will be continuing this next week. So hopefully you guys will be here with us. But until then guys, please ride safe out there. But don't forget to jump down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, give this video a share because we're trying to grow the channel and we can only do it with your help. And as you can see, there's some big things coming. So uh, hopefully you guys will be here with us. But like I said, until then guys, ride safe out there. Peace.